welcome back to Crafting with Nana. This week we are doing just one leg and foot and the video is still like 40 minutes long so I apologize but it was really difficult. Around 12 minutes in you want to maybe fast forward a bit and then back up and do the instructions because you're going to see that you have to center the legs right across um, from each other on the body so that each circle of the leg we build them out this time instead of adding them secondary so they have to be centered and even so check that part out at 12 minutes back up and then do the instructions again at 25 minutes it gets a little chaotic in Lucy Collins instructions because um, the foot placement is simply not the way she says it in the instructions so Again, fast forward, back up if you need to, and then go forward with the instructions. Again, I'm sorry it's 40 minutes. I'd like to keep the videos much shorter, but we needed to get at least done with one leg. So let's get started, and I hope you're enjoying this Harry Potter Make Roomy by Lucy Collins. Sometimes tearing stitches out is just an ugly mess. As you can see, once I realized that I was not going to have enough dark gray yarn, I went to unravel my stitches and it was difficult to do. So I just took scissors to it and here we have it. I'm going to push all this aside. I have looked ahead on the instructions. There's really not a place we're going to need that gray yarn. If your kit came with more dark gray yarn than medium gray yarn, you can certainly finish this project with the dark gray yarn as the pattern suggests. However, my kit did not come with dark gray yarn or enough of it and I didn't have a matching dark gray on hand so I tore the stitches out to round 22. Now I'm going to change to the light gray yarn to do his pants because that's what I have the most of. I had the most of the medium gray yarn and the light gray yarn. And while she does say we're changing to dark gray yarn, I did not have enough of that. So with round 22, we are going to catch the back loop only. Go ahead and put my paper clip on to hold that down. And we're going to stitch around for 18 stitches. The same as we did, um, same amount of stitches as in round 21, but this time we're catching the back loop only. This is a good time to look at your head and decide if you have too little or too much stuffing because after this point we won't be able to add into the head. So the pattern suggests stuffing the body now as much as possible because we're going to start the rounds of the legs and that will enclose our body. We will not have a chance to come back and stuff it again. So I took just a little bit more stuffing out of Harry Potter's head. I think I like that better. So the first thing as we start our legs, we're going to find our center stitch 
And instead of using my marking um, beaded markers, I am going to use a piece of thread this time because I can always cut that thread out later and it won't get in my way as I stitch. So finding center front, I'm going to simply come in here and put a piece of thread to mark it. Now again, she doesn't say to change colors or anything, and like we've already talked about, I didn't have enough of the dark gray, so we're going to continue on in one color. Interestingly enough, I think her pattern looks like it's one color anyway. And this time we're starting the thread from the beginning, so we'll go ahead and clip our tail and pull our yarn through to complete the stitch in the back. You can just kind of set those ends out of the way. We'll stuff them in later. Take my paper clip off. And start again on the front. We're going to crochet nine, starting center front around to the back. And then we'll begin connecting the legs to the body. Her instructions are fairly difficult, but I will try to make it simple as I show you how, how to do these stitches. So we're going to start center front. Get that first stitch secured. We're going to stitch around to the back, to the center back. So it should be nine stitches because we have 18 total. Then we're crocheting three, and we're coming back across the body to the front where we put our marker. We're going to go ahead and crochet into that stitch. Turn our work and crochet nine to the other side. Just kind of pull your yarn out or your row out because it kind of tends to roll under. We want to make sure that we get these stitches completely straight. You can tell where I have joined my grays after the burgundy. I have a bit of a gap here, 
but when I'm done, I'll take this end piece with my needle and weave it through there and you won't see that gap. So we're continuing on to our leg stitch where we did three single crochets. We're going to go ahead and single crochet into that chain that cuts across the body. And that gives us a total of 12 stitches. I stitch a little tight so sometimes it's hard to get in to the stitch I need. If you stitch looser, yours might not be so difficult. But again, it's just practice and patience. Now you can see here that I feel like one leg is going to end up being a lot smaller than the other. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and I feel like I did not get my single crochet chain into the center where I needed it when I connected it to the front. So I'm going to pull that back out and readjust. Because I, what I want are these legs to evenly cut across the body. As we stitch them, the leg is going to grow out of the body. So we want them evenly spaced on his body. I hope that makes sense. So come back over here and I think I was just off by one stitch. And when we're working in such a small circle, one stitch can make a big difference. Okay, I think that is much more even. I'll go back around to repeat on this other side. Okay, so now we've completed round 24. We've gone around one side, chain three, brought it back to the front, gone to the other side, and chain three. Now working on rounds 25 through 27, we're going to work on just one leg. We're just gonna crochet those 12 stitches around for three rows.
you can see as you build that leg out that it becomes easier and easier to find your stitches and to crochet in them. This is a very clever pattern, but definitely not an easy pattern. Okay, I'm just about to the first initial part where we did this three single crochets. As you can see, I'm right about halfway across his body right here. So I'm going to stop with this row, and that completes um, row 27. And now our instructions say to change to black yarn. So because I have so many tails, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and pull it through. We're going to come back with our gray working on the other legs. So I know I'm not going to need it on this side anymore. I'm looking for my needle. There it is. I'm going to go ahead at this time and get rid of my tails. I'm going to go ahead and stitch them in, get all of them out of my way and kind of clean this up before I move on to attach the black yarn. And just take a couple of stitches with your needle because you want that gray to be secured within your project. And then when you're happy with it, go ahead and tuck it to the inside and bring it out and then clip it off. I'm going to repeat that process with the rest of my tails and get those done and out of the way. Using the tail of the yarn and making some stitches in to secure it off is a good way to close up any little gaps that you see that you're not happy with. You can just close them up as though you're taking a stitch with thread. The needles that I'm going to link to in the description box, the set has much bigger eyes and also some of the ends have curved hooks. So it makes stitching in yarn a little bit easier. I don't have a set yet, but I need to get one. So you can see where that stitch had created a bit of a bulk. I'm able to just get rid of that bulk and also to close up my loose stitch right here. I'm not loving that gap. So I can just take a little stitch and clear that up as well. And as I'm taking those stitches, that then also ties off the end of my yarn securely. Then tuck it to the inside 
where you can cut it off. All right, guys, if you've stayed with me this long, congratulations. You've probably felt a little frustration with some of the stitches, but again, if you've stayed with me this long, look at how cute his leg is. And we're ready to attach the black yarn, which will start, oops, get in my camera. That will start his feet, the black yarn. I went ahead and clipped out my stitch marker because for making the foot, we need to go ahead and put a different stitch marker in that is two stitches towards the leg of our, of our last stitch marker. And here's my center front. I'm going to go back one, two, and I'm going to put my marker right here. Okay, so I'm back to with my marker from the center front of my body. And then we're going to grab our black yarn and we're going to back loop only in the single stitch until we get to the marked stitch. Her pattern doesn't say exactly where to start the black, but we need to crochet around in the back loop only until we get to this marked stitch. So I think to keep things even, we should go ahead and join our black at that marked stitch and then we'll single crochet around until we get back to it. Remember, back loop only this time. Okay, hey, we're back around to our marked stitch and then we're going to do a three double crochet bob in each of the next four stitches. So we're right here at round 28. We're going to work a three double crochet bob in each of the next four stitches. So coming back to our book. Remember the instructions for her different types of stitches are all in the front of the book, which makes it really handy. You can turn to it if you forget how to do any of the stitches that we're doing. And she has some pretty good pictures here. Oh, that's interesting. She doesn't have that in this book. Well, guys, I find that a little troubling that I can't find that bobble stitch in the Harry Potter. So I went back to my Star Wars kit and the bobble stitch is on page 14 there. And so 
we're going to, I couldn't remember how to do it. It's definitely not a stitch I use on a regular basis. I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more stitches. to bring me around more to the front. And I'm going to do one more stitch. So all we have to do is remember and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I'm going to start his foot right here. So I'm going to yarn over, go through two, pull it back, yarn over, go through two. Let's try that again. We're starting our three double crochet bobble stitch. So we yarn over, go through the next stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go through the same stitch, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, go through the same stitch, yarn over, pull through two, and we have four on our hook. We pull through all four. So let's repeat that again. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go through the same stitch, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, go through the same stitch, yarn over, pull through two, leaving four stitches on our hook, yarn over one last time, and pull through, oh, whoops, I did that wrong, sorry, leaving four stitches on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all four. Okay, so there's, that's in our second, well, I'm not loving that either. This is going to be a long video. I'm going to come back. I don't like where I started it. All right. Here's the marker that I put in. But I'm thinking that I need to come back one more stitch and possibly start my bobble one, two stitches in front of that stitch. Again, I'm not really pleased with her directions, so we're going to try our bobble stitch again. Should be good at it by now, right? Third double crochet, we pull through and we end up with four. Go into the next stitch because we have to do this in four stitches. So we want his foot to come out to the front of the foot, right? Okay, so second stitch and our third in the same stitch. Now we have four on our needle and we're going to pull through all four. Doing that again. I don't like it guys I'm just gonna pull it out again because I want to get this exactly right but let's go ahead and finish it out this time and see okay I like that so It was not at all where she said to start our stitching, but I do like it. So basically our bobble stitch started right at the center of the inside leg and ended right at the center of the outside leg. Now if you're feeling like you need more stuffing in the body, be sure that you do that before we start our next leg. 
All right, moving on. Let's move our bobble stitch out of the way. And we just completed round 28. Now we're going to single crochet in each stitch around until we get back to our marked stitch. I'm back to where I started, um, but I'm going to look again at her picture and see if I want to do one more row around. Because she says to stop here, she says single crochet around so I'd have 12 stitches and then stuff the leg. So it looks like we do one more round all the way around and then stuff the leg. And then we'll start decreasing to close that leg up. It's kind of hard to tell exactly what her pattern is saying sometimes. But I'm going to go ahead and try putting in these last 12 stitches that are just single crochet. So around 29 is simply single crocheting all the way back around again to our starting point. And our starting point is actually where we joined the black yarn to the gray yarn. And again, that makes it really nice. I have that paper clip right here. I'm going to pull out a nice loop so I don't lose that stitch. And then we are going to go ahead and stuff the leg. So as I said before, if you need to add more to the body, now would be a good time to do it. But I think my body is okay. I'm just going to push some of this stuffing up into the leg. One thing I've noticed when I do craft material animals, uh, I stuff them really tight, but in these Amiga Roomies, I don't necessarily want my stuffing to be super tight. It seems to look better if the stuffing is kind of loosely pulled apart and then stuffed up in. I might add a little more stuffing to his body um, because I think his body should be bigger than his leg. So I'll probably add a little bit more stuffing up in here. Maybe take out a little in the leg and not stuff it so tight. Kind of. There we go. I like that. Add a little more of this stuffing over here. Again, it's personal preference. Just play around with it. We're getting towards the end, so that's a relief. All right. 
side. I have his little leg. And our next round will be the last on this. We're simply going to crochet two stitches together all the way around. So we go into one, pull out, or wrap and pull out, go into the second one, wrap and pull out, and we pull through all three stitches. And that just decreases our opening. You can see how it's closing that foot up nicely. Okay, we have our foot closed. Go ahead and clip your black yarn. Grab your needle. We're just going to stitch that all in and finish it off. Now Lucy Collins on her pattern on round 30, you can see here she says leave a length of yarn. So while I'm going to leave that out, I am going to go ahead and close, finish this one off with my needle to get that tail out of my way so we can start the next leg. And again, I just want to take some stitches and secure it in there nicely because I don't want any of my stitches to pull apart. All right, that completes one leg and one foot. And now we're gonna go ahead and start on the next one.